Communication Workers Union delegates representing almost 60,000 staff at BT have voted unanimously to hold a strike ballot as the current standoff over pay continues. An emergency motion held at the CWU Telecom's annual conference was voted for by hundreds of delegates. Well, at today's conference, the uh, Telecom Executive put an emergency motion to, to the conference uh, for debate. Uh, and when we started that debate, the postal colleagues came in from their conference and they joined us. And it was really good to see that solidarity. And it was great to have them in the hall when we had that discussion. The main thrust of, of the, the, the emergency motion today uh, was to give BT one last chance. And what we're saying quite clearly is we don't really want to get into this dispute. We want to try and negotiate a way out of it if we can. But unfortunately, you know, BT up to now haven't done that. But we're clear, you know, we need a, a, a rise in real terms for our members. You know, 2% against a 4.4 inflation is basically a 2.4% cut in, 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 real, in real terms. And the real thing that came out today, uh, which made a difference to it, was the issue around the bonuses that were paid out to senior executive members. That was, a, was announced 15 minutes before we had this debate. And then to get these senior executive members to get the bonuses they've got, uh, at the same time as our members are getting 2%, it's just totally and utterly unfair. Now, I'll make it clear, by the way, I don't mind senior executives of the BT uh, company making vast amount of money and a very, because it's a very successful company. What I expect is my members to get a fair share of those profits at the same time. I don't know with that. Ian Livingston says they're a million pounds. Let me tell you the real figures. The real figures that were announced about 15 minutes ago. The real figures for him, his salary is 850,000 pounds. And his bonus is 1.2 million pounds. <laughs> so Michael Rake, his actual uh, figure is 670,000 pounds. Oh, some might say that he's not getting paid that much, there. But I think you've got to keep in consideration this is for a part time worker. <laughs> right? This guy works sometimes three days a week, other weeks, it's sometimes it's two. So, some two to three days a week, plus all the other directorships he's got elsewhere. He's the chair of BT, he's also the chair, I don't know it, of another company called EasyJet. Not doing too well at the moment, but he's a chair of that too. Hanif Lalani. This is the guy who was the chief financial officer of BT a couple of years ago. Global services went down the tubes. They get rid of the man in charge of that. Well, big payoff, I've got to say, two and a half million quid. Then they put Hanif Lani in charge of it. It's turned round, he's done his work, but he's now got rid of him. And he got a total of 1.16 million pounds of overseeing a part of the company that nearly went down the tubes. Uh, Patricia Hewitt, you know, wonderful woman, wonderful woman. We've got the figures there of 75,000 pounds. I know they're wrong. What I can't absolutely prove what it is, actually. I think the figure's 125,000 pounds. But we're saying, in the last published ones, were 75,000 pounds, Patricia Hewitt. She's a non-executive director of BT, you know, she was an ex-MP. She's in receipt of a very, la a very large pension on the best pension scheme in Britain. They don't want to change that one, do they? <laughs> yeah. She's also uh, moving on uh, shortly to uh, work for another company called Eurotunnel. We're led to believe she's going to get, for another part-time job, uh, another 140,000 euros uh, for that job. She's in company, she's in Alliance Boots, She's in the board of that. She receives tens of thousands of pounds for that, plus her pension. She's doing not too bad. What gets up my nose about Patricia Hewitt, quite clearly, she sits in the committee, she chairs the committee that determines what my members are going to get. I am not taking it for Patricia Hewitt, who sits there and goes on television and sells herself for £5,000 a day to certain people to, and to cabinet ministers. I'm not going to sit back and allow her. I'm not going to allow her to determine my members' pay 
you know, when she's sitting back taking hundreds of thousands of pounds out of it. And she was doing it when she was still an MP. And Gavin Patterson, the one that's up there, I think we said 417,000. Well, Gavin Patterson, actually this year, you know, uh, what we've discovered now, it's slightly wrong, uh, again, his salary is actually 500,000 pounds, half a million pounds his salary, and we've just discovered some minutes ago that his bonus is 487,000 pounds. Another million pound a year job. Now, I've got nothing against those senior executives getting the money. I, if they've set their targets and they've reached their targets, you know, it's fair, that's fair, and they, they, they can get their money. But the point it is, this company is now made, and the results come out of our day there, this company is now made over a billion pounds profit, and we want our fair share. If it's good enough for Ian Livingston, if it's good enough for the other senior directors of this company, it's good enough for our members. Should BT fail to make a revised pay offer that reflects the contributions made by CWU members by midday on the 4th of June, the CWU will immediately serve a formal notice to BT of the intention to ballot all appropriate members for industrial action. I'll be writing today to, to BT uh, responding to what's happened today at this conference and I'll be giving them that opportunity to meet us. You know, we're, this is not open-ended. If they go come back by June the 4th and, and have a negotiate with us again, round the table, sensible negotiations, they, they have to move from where their position is. If they come back and offer us that, I've told you quite clearly now, I will meet with them at any time, anywhere to resolve this dispute. I don't want to get into this dispute. I don't want to take my members into this dispute. But unfortunately, if BD don't come back round the table and talk sensibly against the backdrop of the, the, the huge profits they've made, we are going to be in a dispute situation. I say I'll do everything I can to avoid that, but that may have to be the way the way forward. I'll tell you what, I'm not afraid of it. I'm absolutely convinced our members will never be afraid of it. We'll put out the truth to our members and we'll put out some of it today. Conference. You know, it's been a good debate. There's absolute full support for this. We have been dragged into this by the company. You know, if they want to put uh, you know, things like this out, I don't mind, because we'll just counteract them. What we'll do is tell the truth in every place. From now on, from tomorrow when we leave this conference hall, the main issue is to win this campaign. I know we can win this campaign. I've got no doubt about that whatsoever. But we need to make sure we get a big turnout in the, in the ballot, and we need to make sure we get a big yes for it. Conference, you know, it's quite clear to me, you know, as everybody said, what the slogan is, we are worth more. We're worth much more, and we'll win this campaign. Conference, leave this thing. Uh, I want you to vote for this unanimously and go forward uh, uh, over the next few weeks. Conference, again. Okay. I'm moving. Okay, conference. Emergency motion two is before you. There's been no opposition, so there's no right to reply. All those in favour, please show. You getting that? <laughs> and down. Any against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you, Conference. We are very confident that the members will vote yes on this, but it's not just a matter of getting a, a simple majority uh, out of a ballot of this sort. We need a very, very large turnout uh, in, in this ballot. I would encourage every single member to vote, and whatever way they vote, I would really like them to vote. That's the first thing. We need full participation in this, this ballot. And then once they, they vote, but obviously I want them to vote yes for it, because we really need uh, that, that to happen. It's the only way BT is going to see sense if they don't meet us next week. The only way BT is going to see sense is for us to have a, a large uh, yes vote in, in the ballot, upcoming ballot. That's the only way they'll get back around the table. So we'll give them that opportunity, but we need that very, you know, very large yes vote from our members. We know that members are now backing the executive in what we're saying. Uh, we're going to get the full support of the members. I, I think we're clear. And you can see that today again with the people who came to that rostrum today. Uh, there were really good people from around the country. So it wasn't just one area. There were people there from all around the country of varying uh, sort of views and, and normal. Everybody's united in this one. It's quite clear that BT is totally unfair in, in what they're uh, giving to our members. And there's a real unity. There's never been so much unity in the telecom side uh, of the union as there is, it was today. And it was great to see it. It's great to be, to be back to the old days when everybody was united. We're well united today. We'll stay united. We'll win this campaign. <laughs>